Hello everyone, Wangel here, and welcome back to the Mortal Empires campaign where we are playing as, surprise surprise, Musilon. Now last episode went very well for us. We were able to defeat Albrecht de Bordelot and eliminate his faction from the campaign, as well as take the entire province of Bordelot. Not only does this give us a bit of an economy centre with Bordelot itself, but it's quite fitting that we managed to take Aquitaine as well, because in the Warhammer lore, Aquitaine is actually a dukedom in its own right, and the Red Duke himself, in his mortal life, was actually the Duke of Aquitaine. Now, this is way, way back before this game takes place, but it's a bit of a homecoming for the Red Duke to take the settlement that he once ruled under, you know, ruled in his name. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But... Now that we've defeated Bordelot, we have no enemies, so we are free to choose which direction we want to go, and I asked you guys where we should perhaps go next. Now it was suggested in the comments that we should probably aim for Bastan here. Bastan is pretty isolated if we just double click on it a second, bring up Diplomacy and go on here. You can see they're slightly weaker than us, and they've only got one region. So if we take the settlement to Bastan, then that's the entire faction eliminated. The other thing though which came to mind for me personally is to go after Paravon. And that's because just before recording, I was mucking around, and I had a look to see how strong Bastan was in that. And I thought, I wonder if we could actually take Cassian here in a fight. Now he tends to be quite tough from my experience with the Wood Elves, because we'll I click on him. Lord. Not only does he get to ride a Pegasus himself, but he also has three units of Pegasus Knights, including the Royal Pegasus Knights, which are basically Grail Knights on Pegasi. So that would have been a tough fight usually, but I found out we could actually defeat him in a quick auto-resolve. So what I'm thinking of for this part of the campaign is this. We are going to defeat Cassian's army outside the settlement. We're going to then pop over to Bordelot. Now I can't remember with the battle site markers if we need to be near them in order to do it. Oh no, hang on. Additional more powerful units may be available in the regions, Ray's Deadpool. Right. So we don't have to actually be next to it. We can be as long as we're in Bordelot. So what I'm thinking then, we'll head over to Bordelot, check out what units we can raise from the dead, and then at next turn we'll see about going after Bastan. Once we've taken Bastan, we'll swing over here, we'll go after Montfort, Paravon, head down then towards Quillis, and then our next target will either be Carcassonne or going after the Orcs of Massive Orcor. We definitely want to take this, but it'd be a choice of whether or not we go after the, the Fae Enchantress first, or the Orcs. And then once we've done that, then we can head up, go after Atwa and Kuvion. So, enough of me actually explaining what we're going to do. Let's just go ahead and do it. So, let's go here, but declare war. I didn't actually see who you were at war with. You're fighting the Beastmen and the Spirits of Athol Lauren, which I believe is Durfu's faction. Right, good to know. Okay, declare war. Give it a second. Yeah, as you can see, Baton's bar quite in my favour. If we hit Lightning Strike, you can see we've still got the advantage and the balance of power, but I'm quite happy to let the garrison get involved just to do some extra damage. So, all the resolve. There we go. Close victory. But, I'm quite happy with that outcome. Now, we could dominate the captives just to get 3% replenishment. It's not really worth it. Leadership plus 4, not as useful. 1000 Dark Magic, I'll take that. I know there's a slight penalty to our casualty replenishment, but it's fine. Okay, Brave. Well done, Red Duke. And because we've defeated Cassian here, we get his um, trait, which gives plus 10 speed to all my units. Now, this is the defeated Lord trait, not actually, you know, equipment, Cassian's uh, trait, but a very handy thing nonetheless. Now, we're going to have to wait a little while for replenishment, but given how much we've got, we should be able to get it done quite quickly. And it means, though, we can head over to Bordelot. Making sure we are going in Bordelot, but... Oh, hang on, hang on. One sec. There was a stance, isn't there? Uh, is it this one? Channeling? Yeah, that would give us a bit more replenishment, wouldn't it? How much did we need for it? 25. If we activate it now, that will give us more undead to use. 
And then we can have a look to see what can we raise. So we've got the standard ones, but we've also got Dire Wolves and Wailing Hags. Ooh. Armor Piercing, Ethereal, Causes Terror. What are you got? Okay, Banshees. Okay, so this is like a unit equivalent of Banshees. Probably similar to Waifs. But yeah, that's going to be quite cool. I would love to get a unit of these. But it does mean getting rid of one of my other units. Hmm. I'll tell you what. Let's get rid of... Let's use you and you. Merge you guys together. There we go. And then give me Raylan Hags. Just interested to see what they're like on the battlefield. That could be quite cool. But yeah, you guys will do what you need to do here, and then we'll go after Baston. What does Baston have? Bohemond has got some Grail Knights. That's unfortunate. Yeoman, some Knight Errants. The Beast Slayers of Baston. These are quite cool to, and useful in a fight. And Bohemond himself. What's out here? Mounted Yeoman and Jean Clamé de Aquitaine. How dare he take the same name as us. The Scourge of Aquitaine. And then what about you here? Peasant Bowman, Paladin, Knights of the Realm. Can't see. Oh, Grail Knights. Right, okay. I'll have a think about what we need to do for that in the end turn phase. But while we're getting replenishment, let's move our heroes. So, you actually... You're only level 1 mind, but you can assault set on units and assault the garrison. What's your chances of going after these? 50%? Sure. I, shall diminish this I imagine... Yeah, 38%? Not that good. And I'm not that concerned about Jean Clamet. Alright, you go after them. While you do that... My deeds are success. Ended. Fantastic. That's probably leveled them up as well. Alright, you can damage walls. So let's get you over here as well. And then Aiden down here. We could do with some boost to our technology, so let's move you down here. And see if about Carcassonne. 64%? Success. Fantastic. And he's now picked up Deceitful as well. Oh, those bonuses are really good for our research. And those will be as well. Hmm. Thank you, a good sir. So we got three turns at 25% bonus. Right. What are we researching now anyway? The Liber uh, Necromica. So we get less attrition. Right. Good to know. Okay then, I think that's everything. We've built all the buildings we are currently building. We are upgrading some of them, it seems, or building them. Let's quickly do stats. So you can go for plunge troops. Alright. You... Go for a point in Garrison and Specialists. The Red Duke. What do I want to give you? We can go for Armor of Blood. We can give him his unique item. And what else? What else? What else? We could go for Quick Blood. Increases melee attack even more. That's missile resistance. Actually, just to remind me again, Van Hell's Dance Macabre. Yeah, this does it as an area of effect if we overcast it. Sure, we'll go for that. The ability to boost up our units with that high level of melee attack and that's very good. Armor Blood gives us regeneration. Combine that with Hunger. That means we'll be very good when it comes to armor, would not it? And get our health back, I mean. Okay, Aiden, you're going to continue just doing stuff down here. So let's have you use Assault units for the moment. Right, well, you guys didn't miss much during the end turn phase, apart from we get some news about the winds and magic changing. So, uh, negative growth, unfortunately, in Leoness, thanks to the bloody Skaven. And a lot of war declarations <laughs> made by different factions, mainly just rebels. But we have got like the Lords of Drakenhof going up against the Watler tribe. Um, what was the other interesting one? Oh, Durfu's going after Skarsnik. So, yeah. That's all that happened, really. But, with that now done, let's keep... No, not you. I don't want you, Solas. I want Aiden here. I want him to just keep going back and forth between Carcassonne and Brian, just so he can take advantage and continue to steal technology, but also to be able to keep an eye on Carcassonne itself. 
Might actually get you to do a lap up to Quillis as well, I think. Yeah, let's move you there. But the main thing, though, is Baston. Now, actually, before we do that, I just realized we've got free blood kiss, which means we can now awaken another vampire. So we've already done the Fallen Knight, don't forget. So we have to use six now to get the next level. But we could go for Blood Dragons for weapon strength. Lamian for upkeep reduction for heroes. And I've got, like I said before, I've got a plan in mind for a particular character that's going to be from the Lamian bloodline. So we'll bear that in mind. Ambush success chance we don't really use. Research way could be useful. I think given the amount of heroes we got right now, I am going to go for the first gift. Again, reduced upkeep for them and boost up their income as a result. So that's that. But now, how are we going to crack Bastan? We have really two options. We could either, one, attack Jean Clamet out in the uh, open, which brings in the rest of the army as a garrison, you know, as reinforcements. And if we see what they've got. Do you know who I am? Yeah, lots of yeomen, grey or knights. Right. Lord and remind me, what do they have here again? Men at arms, bowmen. They're going to have a lot of mounted units, which is really going to be a sod to deal with. So the better thing, actually, yeah, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. First of all, let's grab our heroes. You, good sir, are going to go and damage the walls for me. Go and smash some of them down. Failure. Bugger. Okay, no matter. Uh, you can continue to damage the garrison for me this time. Success. Better. And he now hates men. Okay, quite fitting. And he... Live undead. Sure. Increased soul garrison bonus. I'll take it. Right. So that's everybody. So this is what we're going to do. The Red Duke is going to attack Jean Clamet outside the settlement. We're going to take advantage once we pop through this. Who are you fighting the dwarves for? Clan Galstock. Oh, why up there? Right. We're now going to use Lightning Strike to... Oh. Oh. As tempting as it is with that balance bar. No, I'm going to stick to my plan. We'll eliminate the army outside. Nice and easy, like that. I'll take the captives, I guess. <laughs> Alright, got Nightbane. So because we've managed to kill off the Bretonians quite a bit, we've got some bonuses, good. Corpse Thief, Immortal Informer, City and Trinket, okay. So what we're going to do now is actually lay siege to Bastan. I want to get some towers, so I might skip forward at least two turns. I'll see then how I feel about maybe building some more towers or maybe even get a gate down. Yeah, let's um, go for that for the moment. Obliterate. The reason why I'm doing this in fact, yeah, let me, I'll tell you what, actually, we're having end just skip, sit around not too much. Let me focus on doing this. So you, good sir, you can do with some damage in walls this time. Okay, you stash. Let's get you to. Hinder replenishment? Don't really need. So I'll go for boost income for me. Okay, Mina can have soul blight. Doom and Darkness caused terror. Let's go Soul Blight. Just because the reductions to weapon strength and uh, armor will be quite useful. Okay, you. Let's go. Points in here. Okay, done. So, the reason why I want to uh, lay siege to Bastan and attack it rather than draw the uh, defenders out is because of the amount of knights and yeomen that they have. Once we get in them into combat, that's fine, but the problem is fighting them in the open, especially with that much cavalry, is that the enemy are going to be able to outflank us quite easily. 
Whereas if we attack them inside the settlement, we can take the walls and then be able to fight them in the streets, which means the enemy's cavalry can't really outmaneuver us because of the oh, streets and things like that. Whereas we can then go around, attack them from the rear and just go after them. Of course, the problem with that is that we're going to have to take the walls. And they do have quite a few garrison units with, who are infantry. Not so much I noticed with the army led by Bohemond. Or not, they are coming out to attack us, it seems. Right. Really didn't want this, but we're going to have to do it, aren't we? Okay, guys. See you guys down on the battlefield. Running guys, here we are outside the gates of Bastan as the defenders have sallied forth to try and push us back. Now, I have a bit of a pet peeve when it comes to siege attacks when the defenders have sallied forth. And if you can indulge me, let me slow down the game a second. By the way, here are the Raylan Hags. You can see that they're basically the Banshee model just put into a unit. I do think they look kind of cool. Quite fitting as well for units when you think about it. But if we zoom out a second, right? This is my pet peeve about Sally's from by the Defender. In the far distance here, you can see the beautiful city, in this case, of Baston. Now, I know this is probably just a generic city that they use for Batonia, but it's a lovely city nevertheless. Right here, you can see the walls of said settlement and the gates of the settlement. So why on earth, as the besieger, have I set up my army all the way back here? And don't forget, that's quite a significant distance, you know? Why have I put my army here? And why have I allowed the enemy garrison to be able to get out so far? I mean, if they can get here, they might as well have just ran off the other way or go out on a back door or something, you know? <laughs> hey, it's always been a bit of a pet peeve of mine in more recent Total War games. In the older ones, like Medieval 2, Rome, and I think, wasn't they, did they do it with Empire? No, they didn't do it with Empire. But they used to have it where if you did a Sally battle as the defender, you had to fight as the defender. You had to start inside the settlement, make your way out of the settlement then to attack the sieges. You had the advantage of the towers and any troops you put up on the walls to provide mis da you know, missile damage and that. But generally, though, you had to make your way outside the settlement, right? And then attack the enemy there. So this just, I, I've never liked it in the more recent Honor War games. But I suppose it makes it a bit easier, doesn't it? Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you agree with me or are you happy with how this sort of the situation is here? But anyway... We're not here to listen to me moan about Sally and battles. Let's fight this battle instead. So, in front of us here, you can see Bohemond's first army leading the initial Sally. In the distance, then, we have the garrison coming forth, with the knights in particular able to get into position much more fast or much more quickly to support the initial onslaught. We've got the rest of the garrison slowly going to be making their way up, but it's going to take their time. They've got quite a distance to trek after all. As for me, we've set up a fair defensive line here, spearmen on the flanks, swordsmen in the centre, with the Raylan hags in the dead centre. We've got my graveguard on either flanks here. We've got bowmen, Vargolf, Mina, Red Duke, and over the trees here, we've got three units of Black Knights. Now I'm going to start with this little bit here, because the plan was to let the first attack come up against my ship front line, and then use these guys to flank. But as you can see then, the enemy started bringing their cavalry straight towards my Black Knights. Now, to be fair, they didn't actually know my knights were there, right? In fact, you'll see in a second that just as I'm about to start moving them, when I realize this is happening, here, the enemy noticed that they're there. So, just unfortunate, it's because the mounted units of the enemy, the Grail Knights and that, were trying to get in a position to outflank, just like these guys are doing over here. But it's just annoying that I didn't have much cover, really, and that was the best I could do. But as I bring my Black Knights in on the left flank, I set up the Grave Guard ready to receive the charge from the Grail Knights. Now, bear in mind, these guys aren't really designed for this. And you can see that in the charge itself. You can see how quickly my unit's health just drops down. Absolute madness, right? Now, in return, I end up casting the Invocation in the Heck, as well as Soul Blight, just to try and help the left flank a bit. 
Although it didn't help, where if I hover over the Grail Knights, you can see they've got this ability, Lady's Mantle, reducing enemy, well, damage resistance, I should say, from me, for three units in the area. Very, very annoying, but one of those things. Over on the wire flank, it's actually a little bit easier. The enemy hasn't quite made up their mind exactly what they're doing, so it does give me enough time to swing my spearmen around ready to receive the enemy charge and pull my grave guard behind them so they can then outflank when needed. We also got a situation here in the center where we've actually managed to blast away, really, the Beast Slayers of Baston, thanks to my archers doing a fair bit of damage and then me sending in the hags to finish them off. Over here, in with the Polemen, we are sending in some Skeleton Warriors and Mina just to help deal with them. And the center line is actually doing relatively okay. Likewise, on the left, we're actually doing a bit better now. Because we've, while the enemy do have a lot of mounted yeomen around and the Grail Knights, we have got the Red Duke fighting away inside. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see him why here. And he's helping us do a ton of damage against the Grail Knights, enough that we're going to be able to get them to retreat in just short order. Unfortunately, though, we do have other situations. I originally tried to chase down these yeoman archers with my Black Knights, as you saw. And then I realized, though, that we can't catch up. The Black Knights, as you can see, have actually got a speed of 102. Wait, what? Huh. They should have been able to catch up with them, but uh, they didn't. Okay, sure. But anyway, instead what I end up doing is I send one unit here to try and help out my Raelian Hags against the Knight Errants. The others I was going to send around the flank to try and help out with the Whites and deal with the Knights there. But instead the garrison units have managed to arrive. So it's a case of, okay, pull them back instead. Over here though, we've got a unit of Black Knights who were originally going after, in fact you can see them over here, chasing down the Mounted Yeoman which was annoying. Because thanks to us now being swarming those Grail Knights with the Red Duke, you know, nearby Graveguard and Spearmen and a zombie unit that I summoned in, we were able to get their numbers and health down quite a bit. Although they've managed to kill quite a lot of units, as you can see, 120 and counting. These guys are just about to retreat though, and I was hoping to catch them up with my Black Knights, but we don't get there quite in time, but we are able to kill them off easily enough. Here in the center, things are going to a bit more of a mess. You can see that we've got units scattered around. There's a number of times I've just forgot that I had an ant unit sit in spare. So we've got like a Black Knight unit here, doing absolutely nothing. While I'm waiting, we're sitting around to focus on another part of the battlefield. And I was like, oh yeah, now it's time to move. These guys though are coming in now to support here. We've got another unit of Black Knights smashing them in to do damage. I was a little concerned about this point. You can see my Raelian Hags have taken a fair bit of damage themselves, but I'm trying to pull them out of there and instead bringing in other units to support. Over on the left flank, we've got an issue though where my, oh, in fact, going off the wrong way. But I do have this unit of Black Knights here chasing down enemy bowmen as much as we can, but again, they're getting shot at by all these mounted yeomen. It's so frustrating. Over here in the center then, we've got basically the last big fight of the battle. We've got Skeleton Warriors coming in, the Red Duke is charged in at this point to go after Bohemond. We've got Skeleton Spearmen who have managed to keep the Duke busy for quite some time. But with the Red Duke turning up now, we'll be able to try and quickly go after him. Soul Blight is helping us out a little as well, which is always useful to see. And yeah, at this point, all we've got left to really worry about is a few units like the Paladin here. We've got some units here of Foot Squires losing decisively. And Bohemond trying to get away from the Red Duke at this point. But as you can see here, victory is now within our grasp. And if you watch the balance bar up here, the numbers are very going to quickly drop down to zero for the enemy as a chain route occurs and we win the battle. All that is left to do at this point then is chase down as many of the survivors as we can before they get off the map so we don't have to fight them in the next assault for the castle itself. Now annoyingly we weren't able to catch up with any of the mounted yeomen because by the time they you know they shattered they were far away enough they can just one straight off the map. But we do have the opportunity to go after a lot of the infantry so we got units like this foot squires mod unit here with 80 models left that we still want to try and kill off if possible as well as other ones just scattered around here and there. But between my Black Knights, the Red Duke, the Vargulf and Mina, we were able to catch up with plenty of them and kill them off. One thing I did do before we quit the battle 
is some of my units you can see in the center here have taken quite a lot of damage. The Raylan Hags, a unit here of Spearmen, and my two Graveguard units. Now because I'm probably going to be using those in the attack on Bastan itself, I end up grouping them up around here, just so we can get the Duke to cast Invocation of Mehek as a area yeah, of effect spell in order to raise their health up. Just give them a few more extra people in the units before we actually attack Bastan itself. But we're going to do that once we get back to the campaign map. So see you guys there. So, a close victory, but thanks to chasing down a lot of the enemy units after the battle, you can see that the garrison is pretty much eliminated, with only really the Grail Knights and a couple of men left. Bohemond's army is much more at full strength, mainly because of these mounted yeoman archers getting away, as well as the other mounted yeoman, but they were always going to be an irritation to deal with anyway. But we were able to kill off units like the Grail Knights, we chased down the survivors of the Beast Slayers. So all in all, I'm happy with the current situation. Now what I'm going to see about doing is dominating the captives, just so we get our replenishment back a bit. And it should make things easier now for us to attack. Although I can't help but notice, that balance of power is still slightly in their favour despite it all. <laughs> oh well, one of those things. But anyway, that's back to our turn. I'll have a look now to see what our chances are of taking Baston once we pop through all of these. Oh, we've got the Bastard Years of Shalon. Famous group of bandits from the forests of Shalon with poisonous halberds in hands. They are a deadly and scary force to be reckoned with. Ooh, that does seem quite interesting. We finished off our attrition. Good, good, good. And... Bonus against larger and fighting against Empire and Batonia, and we get a more increased reinforcement range. Okay. Right. Let's see now. We're probably going to skip a turn anyway, because I know it just allows us to get the siege... Oh no, hang on. Oh no, we got them built already. Really? Our labor force... That was free. I swear that was free before. So how did it go up so quickly? You know what? It doesn't matter. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and resolve that. There we go. A close victory, but we've now taken Baston. We could subjugate the mind, but I'd rather just take all the settlements myself. So there we go. Another faction destroyed. Picked up a student as well. I'll give that student to Aiden, I think. Just because it increases research, might as well. I think. I feel tempted. To swap out one of these skellies here. So I'll tell you what, let's... Oops. Let's merge you guys. Yeah, that's fine. I'm tempted to recruit that unit. Just to see what they're like on the battlefield. Now if we click on here and pop here. Yeah, armor piercing, anti-large charge defense. Those would be useful against knights. So sure, we'll grab you. And I'm going to disband you. And just summon another unit in instead. Nice and easy. Alright, nothing we can get from here. And as for Baston itself... Alright, we have access to a tap room if we wanted to get more necromancers. To be honest, I don't really want the tap room, so we'll get rid of that. We have no landmark buildings or anything like that to think about. So for the moment, let's recruit a Bellfire Brazier again, just so we can get start get spreading corruption. And then I'll think about what to do instead of the tap room. So these guys will be basically back up to full strength, ready for us to go after Montfort in the following turn. Right, you... Can I come over here now and just spy out for me? What do they have? You, good sir, can see about doing the same down in Palavon. And then Aiden. Let's make sure we give you as well, don't forget, the students. And I'm going to have you swing up towards Quillis. Just so we can keep track of where all the different enemies are for them. Because at the moment, they, I can't see a single army anywhere. I mean, we've got this one here. But she's only a prophetess by herself. I mean, seems a pretty poor target for me, me at the moment. Let's upgrade that. All of Musilan is now done. We're still waiting. We could upgrade Leoness. We just need that. We could try and upgrade the, the palace itself. Increase tax rates and eventually we'll be able to get our hands on black knights and that. 
But we do need to upgrade Leoness if we want to get the armory in order to get those. So, yeah. Might as well leave it for the moment. Otherwise, yeah. Okay. Let's just quickly upgrade our characters. So we can now get a Hellsteed for him. Definitely going to try that out. Doom Rider. Oh, hang on. We can go for Doom Rider or Grave Sentinels. Right. So Doom Rider gives us reduction for binding circles, Black Knights, and then eventually Armor Piercing. Okay. Grave Sentinels gives us infantry, but better infantry. Bonuses to that, and then Honor or Death. Increased damage resistance and leadership. Ooh. I really don't know which one to go for. I really do feel tempted for Doom Rider because of the knights. But Grave Sentinels for Graveguard will be quite cool. And I think the bonus here, 11% damage resistance, would be quite cool. But then, nah, he's going to be a warrior, knights. Uh, ah, screw it. We're going to go for that. <laughs> right. And just to help things out a bit... Let's go for... Uh, I wouldn't mind going for the Skeleton's ability on that, to be honest. Let's finish off Quick Blood with you as well. Let's do that. So you've got that now. Mina, we could give her a ha that, but I'm tempted to wait two more turns and give her a Hellsteed as well. So we can give her the Hunger, finally. Yeah, let's give you that. She's a vampire. Oh, yeah, after all, it makes complete sense to me. As for here, bonuses for zombies, skeleton warriors, graveguard and black knights. Don't care too much for the zombies, although getting master of the putrid horde, making it so zombies are basically free, that has some good uses, I must say. A vigor loss reduction for those, how long is that going to take? 15 turns. Okay, we can manage that. I'm quite happy to research that for the moment. Right. And what do we have left? Hey, how's then? Okay, no need to worry about that right away. Okay. Ah. This might be a situation. Aquitaine has been attacked by Cassion and a bunch of units. To be honest with you guys, I think we can... We might have a chance. Might being the optimal word. Oh, I don't know though. He's got a lot of units under his command. Mainly knights and that, which I'm a little concerned about because they're anti infantry. Oh, I'm just going to leave it to chance. Valiant defeat, sure. That's okay. He's taken Aquitaine. We'll just swing back and go after it again. Take it back under our control. And show him once again not to mess with the Red Duke. Right. Oh yeah, that happened during the end turn phase. Beast Lord Wagkaf got defeated and his entire faction destroyed. Oh, Clan Galstock has decided to unite against us. Okay, apart for all the rest of these. Right. Can... No, damn it. I don't know if you guys can see. Just between the... Movement range and the set settlement, there's a slight little red line to suggest that it was just slightly out of range. Bugger. Alright, I'll tell you what we're going to do then. We're going to be sneaky boys. We're going to sneak up to here, see if we can set up an ambush, and get them that way. So you go and do that, good sir. I'm going to quick look to see what else we can pick up here. Okay, we can get fell bats now and Raylan, more Raylan hags, okay. Right, in the meantime then, let's see what else. Eustache can just continue to do what he was doing here. We'll have you practice destroying the walls of Paravon. Failure, but you can learn from your failures. Monforts we don't have to worry about, so I'm going to bring you back over here. See if we can maybe assault your units. Okay, Aiden, let's have you attack Quillis. There we go, some faster research yet again. Alright, upgrades. Let's go ahead and upgrade now Leoness to a shady township. Okay, let's sort out you. 
We'll go wounds this time. Mina. One more level. And then we can get you your health steed. In the meantime, though, can we get... What do we need for this one? Level 10. I'm going to leave the points for the moment. So, yeah, it's going to be slightly annoying because it's going to keep having the pop-up that I need to spend it. But I'd rather spend the points on getting my hands on the extra replenishment and getting her, her health steed as well. So, let's do another turn. We'll finish... Uh, uh, we'll get Aquitaine back and then we'll bring the episode to an end. Right now. So annoyingly, Cassian has retreated back to Power Vaughn. Although I must admit, I had a slight heart attack <laughs> during the end turn phase when Leon Kerr actually turned up. He was marching right towards Castle Bastana to the north and I was really worried he was coming to attack. And then I noticed, oh yeah, they didn't have the declaration of war and he just marched straight on past. Now I don't know what he's planning to do down south, but we'll have to keep a slight eye on him. For the moment, though, let's go and attack Aquitaine and get it back. Thank you. Another good trait. We got picked up the Hungry now. Villagers across Seven Batonia became cannibalistic haunts as the hunger racked survivors looked to their slain kinsmen for sustenance through a harsh winter and a bloody sp spring. Cool. Right. Let's sort out our commandments again. So public order is going to be an issue now, thanks to provincial instability. Yeah, let's focus on growth for the mo not for the moment. You can continue focusing on growth. Alright, let's continue upgrading the guys now. So let's see what we're going to go with you. I think I'll go strength of steel for now. And then for Mina... Oh yeah, we still haven't leveled her up yet, that's why. Alright, hero's not moved. Okay, Aiden... We'll have you head up to here for the minutes. So it might be handy for you to do some attacks on enemy units. For you... Hinder replenishment, see if that will work. Successful, good. Hates men now as well. And Bulgars. Let's see if we can have you attack his army as well. 24%. Ooh, that might not be so good. Let's see what happens though. Failure. Not surprising. Alright, you now can have assassinate units and assassinate. You can have assassinate and damage walls. And another quick end turn. Right then, let's leave things here for today. So, next episode, we're going to finish off Paravon. Now, Cassian actually headed down towards Quillis, so I feel a little tempted to head down here and attack him, and then swing up here. But on the other hand then, yeah, because if we can deal with his army first, and then we can easily go after the other settlements, rather than the other way around, where we go after his settlements, and he can attack us in Aquitaine again. So yeah, that's going to be the plan, but we'll sort that out next time. So for now though guys, thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed, and you do join me next time of course for some more Warhammer. But until then everybody, take care, stay safe, and goodbye for now.